Hey, sports fans, Louis Diamond live in Las Vegas with Better Center Live. And we're coming to you with college football. Today, the first day of college football. Actually, the second weekend of college football, but we got a big slate of college football. Some games have started already and uh, just now, but uh, there's been some moves on the game, so let's get you some quick moves. Lots of steam on the Cal and North Carolina game has gone to the under. Went from 66, now down as low as 59. Uh, we have some steam on the under, also with Miami and Marshall from 51 and a half down to 48. Big steam again on uh, 23. It was uh, Duke from 23 all the way up to 34 and a half. Big, big steam on Duke in this game. So this is what we're going to do for you here on Better Center Live. We're going to get you the steam, the lines as uh, they're steaming, and we're going to bring some Better Center handicappers here to talk about today's college football action. And there's plenty of it. And uh, let's. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our first Better Center handicapper, and uh, bring him live, get some uh, opinions from Tony Gulledge, the great white capper. And uh, Tony, you are our first uh, handicapper on Better Center Live. How are you today? I'm doing great. Nice to be with you, Luke. Great to oh, have you oh. here. So we got a uh, big slate of college football going today. We got a lot of lines moving. We got a lot of uh, action out there. What do you see? Missouri. In today? First touchdown of the day to Missouri. Missouri, first touchdown on Saturday. You got anything going with that game? Uh, sure, do not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. But you know how many times it happens where uh, you come right out, get that first touchdown of the game, and then you never see nothing after that. So you got to be careful of just uh, getting too excited for. Uh, Missouri backers. Missouri. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of times these teams, they're all of a sudden they're down 7 nothing, and they're going to sit down and say to themselves, this is going to be a real long day if we don't, you know, get ourselves focused. And that brings, you know, more focus to the team that's down early in the game. So, but many times they get that first touchdown and it's uh, lights out for the other team. So. Sure does. Goes yeah. both ways, don't it? Yeah, it sure does. But uh, it, I guess it all depends who you got and who they're playing. <laughs> so, what else we got uh, going man, on here today? Uh, and this I is kind of a rivalry, so home. they're trying to make yeah. it a rivalry, but 36 and a half Missouri point favorite. Yeah. Yeah, it's not much of a rivalry, I don't think. Yeah, they I want it to be. Very it's just, just getting up into Division One. Maybe call us back in 10 years. Yeah, I, I still think that uh, 35 and a half might be a little bit too much in this game. That's definitely ambitious. I, uh, I was looking at a couple of these lines, thinking the lines were too high. I certainly don't want to jump on the other team either. So, I mean, I guess that's a good line for, you know, if I'm looking at it. Like this. Well, I will say this. The um, conference mismatch games, like when you look at the bottom of the schedule, there's about 40 games at the bottom of the schedule. Uh, games, oh, yeah, yeah where, where you just see total conference mismatch. Big teams playing small teams. As said, like you, New, Mexico, New Mexico against Abilene Christian today, 34 points for it. Lay it. Lay it with a smile. Lay it with a smile. <laughs> it, it, I'm serious. The, these guys, they don't face real opponents and they get that one game a year so they can you know well you know the the big team gets the easy win the little team gets some money for their pocket but it's, uh it's a paid ass whipping is all it is you just get paid to show up take your take your lumps and go back home but yeah. you get paid yeah there's no doubt and we get to take advantage of it because even though they got these big lines look at tcu Minus 64 and a half versus Jacksonville that's State. A, that's you, absurd, man. Isn't it? Now, that might be a little tough one to lay, but usually when these guys are 35 and 40 point favorites, 
I, I see them as easy like winners. Here. It's just total mismatch. I usually put them like a $50 max when it gets that high, unless I just absolutely have a great feeling about something. Well, yeah, that's just... Uh, 65 is like, I'm laughing at that. That's that's funny. I, they might cover that number. I'm not saying they won't. That's right. just a lot. You're, you're spotting a lot of damn. That's like something off a cartoon, man, to cover that kind of spread. I know, but Basically, I tell you what, when we come back tomorrow. Any touchdown, good luck covering 65. No doubt. No doubt. You're, you're, yeah. you're going to pitch a three-point game or a shutout. And that's about and that's about your only option. Yeah, seventy-two seven. Yeah, that's yeah right. Seventy-two <laughs> seven, and you get beat by the hook. Well, seventy-two <laughs> six. Yeah, but uh, but I bet you if we look at these games tomorrow, and we look at the spreads, you can start them a few. You can tell me a couple that you think are just those crazy. I mean, I like oh, I, I saw a couple earlier. Fresno State. Is laying thirty-two and a half to Incarnate Word. I think it's a small school. A small school in, in uh, Nebraska. I think I want to say is where that's at. Right. That's, that's small. These teams are just. They're still. Uh, I want to say the FBS for sure. Well, it used to be one double A. This always confuses me when they change that. They used right. to have it all down. They changed it. Yeah, that uh, got real one confusing eight. there. But look at UNLV, lane 45 to the Howard Bills. Uh, You know, 45 for UNLV. That's crazy. That's a MEAC. That's a MEAC team. But but I'm telling you, if you take those, those 40 plays and you, anybody that's 20 points, even 15 points or higher favorite, that's money. I bet you when we look at that, we look back tomorrow, you're going to see yourself with a winning proposition if you bet every game evenly. That's my I think opinion. a lot of it's perception. Yeah, I might lay off the team with the with the big you know resume like the TCU. They're just too they're going to get pounded too hard. Maybe some of these lesser ones. I mean, I'm still looking at. These, like, I, I don't know how I could lay all these points and stuff. I mean, I can make a fun bets, but if it comes down to, like, laying my big bet of the day down, I just, uh, uh. You, they're nice when you win, but when you lose one of those games, you get, you got to feel like a big lollipop, man, like you got suckered hard. Nah, I don't. I'm, I, I'm of the other side. I just know that if I play it evenly and I get enough of them, I'm going to win because the big school eats the little school. It's just a fish game. <laughs> so so what are you looking, looking at, at today? Yeah, I've got a couple of games that I definitely like. Uh, one a little more than the other. One of the games I do like, the Michigan and uh, Florida game later. All right. Yeah, cool that's uh, definitely something that's on everybody's plate today because uh you know florida has all the suspended players and right. uh, you know harbaugh's got plenty of time to prepare for something like this and when you give harbaugh the time i gotta give him the edge what are you thinking uh it's definitely the suspensions you know of the all the suspensions two were notable wide receiver antonio callaway and the running back jordan scarlett both were uh Big producers in a low production offense, you know, under the coach McElwain. I really didn't realize they changed coaches from Muschamp the past year or whatever. They look the same. Oh, they've had a new coach for two. You would have never known because the offense is still pretty anemic for Florida. They you have know, been. Team. They've been living off of defense. They're going to be able to pull it off today with defense. Yeah, the defense, you just. We'll see. They lost big on some defense, man. They, they're going to have to replace a lot of players, and it might take time to gel. It might take a little more than this game. Uh, Michigan, agree. Spites is back. You know, apparently he's going to be the quarterback. Chris Evans at running back. 
definitely have a few holes to fill on the defensive side of the football, but you got Harbaugh, the system in place that seems to be working. A lot of times with these coaches, once they get their style in place, it's just a matter of putting the right people at the right place. You know, don't have to be the best athlete at every position. It's just got to be somebody willing to do their job. That's and right. he's a great coach. He's great at doing that. So, uh, Florida, I just think their offense today is going to be a liability. I think I put a score down here. I'm going to play. I'm playing Michigan, and I got a score of 27-17 is the way I, I see this game coming out. Michigan, Michigan is going to get 27, the best of them. 27-17. So you're saying a little bit of an under edge, too. Is that what – you know, I – some people focus their handicapping on, on spreads, you know, money lines and over. I don't really ever, I've never been an over under kind of guy. Now, I've had people tell me based on how I predict the flow of the game, I'll, I'll say, I think this will be a, a grinding game and, and, and people will bet the under just off me saying it that way because it's, you know, I don't, handicap four totals though i don't when i do my prediction models it's all about final scores you know, and spreads producing a spread so right. and it's kind of weird i just don't focus on kind of a disciplined gamble i just gamble on my focus and so my specialty is you're going to be your point spreads and it's, it's kind of weird that i don't pay much attention to totals other than, like I said, I've had people say, wow, you know, your analysis of that game was spot on. You know, I took the over. Because I might mention I think this game will be a shootout. Right. And I'll, I'll give what I think the score will be, not even knowing what the actual betting total is. What is the total on that game? <laughs> You're pretty damn close. It's uh, 45 and a half right now. And uh, where the hell did it go? Uh, yeah, 45, 45 and a half. I see 146. The game is between four and a half and five. I see one six out there right now. Opened up at 47 and a half. So the steam is agreeing with you. I am going to disagree a little bit because. Uh, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I mean, those, I'm not a big over under guy because. I think there's more variables sometimes in those outcomes that those numbers will be so sharp that even the smallest play in a game can have a gigantic effect on the outcome of the totals. That's just my personal experience, Dylan. Yeah, it's all a gambling game. You go with what works for you. Yeah, I just I, I'm more I of a really fan. I'm more of a fan of thinking that uh, a total. Uh, you get two teams that. You're asking to do the same thing. So if you got two teams that have a tendency to play in over events, and uh, it's easier to ask them to just go over than to have two teams fighting each other for that point spread. And uh, so I've had some success with totals uh, just looking for uh, matching two teams that play either overs or unders. And if you get more and more stuff like that, it seems to work for me anyways. I mean, the few I play, I used to say you could count my total, uh, my you know, plays on totals on one hand for an entire year. Sometimes I don't do many. You just, right. uh, usually I go for overs when I have a real feeling that for sure it's going to be a, an absolute gunning, no, you know, like a Pac-12 game on the late Saturday night. I know it's going to be 50-50 at halftime, and the and the totals like 74 and a half. I'm just like taking the over. Right. I don't do it often. A lot of guys will just uh, take the lowest number embedded under and the highest number embedded over. And that's uh, an old, old school technique. I've heard that one. Yeah, a lot of guys uh, are, are definitely fans of that. I'm a fan of looking at it because there's usually something fishy. With the highest total of the day or the lowest total of the day. And I'm always looking to see if there's something into that. So. You know, sometimes I'm more of a technical handicapper, Lou, as opposed to a lot of people are like you. I've had one friend in my life, a great gambling friend, and he's always, he lives by watching the line. 
and I, I give him a hard time and miss my other gambling buddies always give him a hard time because I'll pick on him with it. It's like, oh, who do you like today? The guy's name is Mark. Mark, who do you like today? And he's more or less telling me, I got to see where that, mu- that line moves. You know, basically saying he doesn't know who he likes until he, he finds out what everybody is betting. Yeah, and that's why I used to tell him, like, you're, you're what we call a psychological gambler. <laughs> You're trying to understand the psychology of where everything is instead of actually just picking a side and analyzing how the game will be played you know, right. correctly, predicting the outcome, and cashing the ticket. You're, you're just following the number. Yeah. I'm guilty of the fire. same sometimes because I, I, I want to know what the market's feeling. I want to know what the locker room is feeling. And I want the numbers to match those feelings. So that's kind of, you know, part of, part of my arsenal. The information player, right? The information, they're not an analytical handicapper. They're more of a, a positional player, I guess is what I used to call a couple guys. You just play positions. They don't care. They it's just, they the only game. look at the number. And look at yeah, the market, they, and that's the reasoning, is what you're saying. Yeah, they, they hit and miss like everybody else, man. People All day like long. If, you bet, if, you, if they bet huge amounts of money, that oh, they must be, they must know something. No, they're like everybody else, man. They're gonna hit some and they're gonna lose some. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't really, I don't view the scale of your wagering as a, as an overall parameter on your acumen and picking a game. I mean, always, I always tell people that I deal with the bet within your means. Nothing's easy. Uh, just be disciplined and focused on how you gamble. Manage the money you have in a way that you never bust out. You know, gamble and maintain something and work to build on it. Ain't one be, game big enough to risk it all. Let's put it that way. So, but uh, yeah, just don't put yourself in bad positions to where you might lose discipline. You know, you've got to keep your discipline when you gamble. If you're going to do this long term, I mean, if you just want to make a bet and you need to catch, you, know, you need to catch a play to pay something. Obviously, you're taking a big risk, but you know, definitely, yeah, you know, understand your how your risk. And it's definitely a risk assessment. You know, obviously, if you're going to play one big bet, it's all or nothing. Like like a roulette table, and you're hoping for an educated guess on where the ball's going to land. Well, that's what a lot of um, gamblers fall into that. They try to find that one big game and lock in on that one big game. But the pros don't man, do that. The pros are man, just looking for that right. edge. And if they feel there's an yeah, edge, they're just betting it. Numbers, I, I try my best to analyze why. I can even look when I see that my numbers, I use the variations of power ratings where I, I make my spreads on a lot of these various, you know, on the games, particularly football. I love doing it. It's like my little scientific hobby that I do. And when I do that, a lot of times there'll be significant differences between my spread and my actual spread. And, and if you do a detailed analysis of why that number so gapped between it, but you'd be surprised, Lou. I'm using old school techniques, and 50% of the games, my spread and the real spread are, are within a point. Just, you know, bam, bam. So using a pen and a paper and, and maintaining power ratings on a team and just creating a spread. It, it, it's like the format they're using. They just got somebody making a program to do it. And when there's differences, that's when you'll notice you need to look and figure out why there's a difference. You know, sometimes what Absolutely. looks like a good suckers pit that you need to protect against. And you learn that over time. Once you gamble enough times, you'll see that, oh yeah, the last time I thought I had a great edge on a number, I got burned. And, and you and you go, oh, it worked again. You, you'll start developing those patterns over long periods of time. And you, you'll know when to bet bigger. I always say reserve the big place for when the big place come. Don't go looking for the big play. Don't, you know, don't force it. If, you're, if the play is making itself big, then you're putting yourself in a bad position. When you're making the play big by how you feel and the confidence and, and the handicap, then you're in control of the game. And I, I, everybody I deal with, I try to get them to that 
equate that mentality of things. So that's going to keep you going long term. If you want to gamble long term, you have to be patient and use smart gamble. You have to be smart with your bets. I agree. And without that, without doing those things and learning how to do it without emotion, without you know, you just put, make it almost like a business decision. Right. So let's talk about a business decision here for you today. Obviously, you have an opinion on the Michigan game, and uh, and yeah. you have another play for us. So, uh, what what are you what are you telling everybody to do here at the Michigan game today? Uh, play in Michigan is and that's uh, probably my second highest rated play of the day. So my straight bet number two, my second biggest one. All right. I really like the Michigan play. Play Michigan. I, I, I'm agreeing with you on the Michigan here. What else you got for got, us today? All right. Well, I got a big play for everybody on the Coastal Carolina. You need to get your up. head straight before we get into this. I'm cool with that. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I might need to. I'm gathering my paperwork for here so I can give you a good, good feel. I, I can give you a little background information. Coastal Carolina is making their first appearance in the F. BS. They had previously been in the FCS. Uh, the coach they has been there five years, and, they, and it's like a local school near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Party and they time. take a lot of pride and built up this program. The guy they got as a coach is a, is a, is a character, man. His name is uh, Maglio. And, nice Irish uh, boy. I got, and I got his card right here. And I was just looking at, man, his life. Yeah, he basically... Uh, He's been the uh, what was it, CEO and chairman of the board of uh, uh, what company? Joe Maglia. So, I mean, this guy's like, he, he worked as a, after he was CEO of Ameritrade, he worked as an unpaid assistant in, at Nebraska for a couple of years and then went to Coastal Carolina to take over their football program and be head coach. I did not so, know this. Interesting stuff. So he's, they're 51 and 15 straight up in his five years again i mean obviously we're talking against lesser comp you know of FC, course fc oh, doesn't matter 51 and 15 i don't care what level if it's peewee you're doing something right right and he and he does it with a, it's a lot of system where he he he's this guy's to me is almost like a guru man it's, it's he's kind of impressive an impressive guy he's a great locker room guy i'm sure yes and uh uh, the home is going to be great. They got a great home crowd. Okay, and this is their opening FBS game, and uh, they score a lot. I mean, since he's been coached, they have in no of the five years that they scored less than thirty-four points a game. So this is a prolific scoring team. And UMass is an score. over team. UMass is always in an over event as of uh, recent, anyways. So I mean, if you're if you're that kind of player, a total player. If you take my suggestion that Coastal is going to put up a lot of points, and you know Joe suggests that UMass is a scoring team, I don't know what the total is on that game. Maybe Joe can look it up. I, I talk about UMass and why I think playing against them today Open, is a great idea. It opened up at fifty-nine. It's been bet down to fifty-six and a half and fifty-seven. So a little steam on the under. Coastal Carolina opens up a three-point favorite, and now they are a two and a half. Point dog. So, all the steam is going against you, Tony. So, but that's all. That sometimes that's a good thing. I've been on that side of the boat, man. And I, sometimes you don't, Matt. You don't care, man. And that's that's good. Sure. I'm not a psychological player. I'm the kind of guy that's going to pick my position early, usually stake my a little bit of claim on it, and then just I'm going to go with what I think. And, you know. I can, Sometimes you're against the, the world, and sometimes you're not. But uh, this is one of these plays. Uh, UMass. I was going to note that their current coach is Mark Whipple. They're one and twelve in one possession games with this guy as the coach. So any close games, they have they have found a way to lose. That's straight up. So you're well, talking that's nice about when you got a short little dog. Very nice. Yeah. So you're looking at a UMass team. That doesn't finish games well. Even this, their opener against Hawaii, they allowed Hawaii to get the late drive for the quick score. You know, lost at home in a game they should have won. Um, right. They've given up 
over 33 points a game of each or higher each of the last four years. So they're a defensive liability since they've been it in F- FBS. All right, so it's uh, the Coastal Carolina is so going to be a boss all tonight. I see, I see UMass walking into a Hornets nest, and I see Coastal Carolina taking a ten-point win, thirty-eight twenty-eight is the score I got. There you go. All game. right, Tony, the Great White Capper, coming in at you with Coastal Carolina plus two and a half. Nice home dog in their first FBS matchup. And also coming with Michigan minus four and a half over the Florida Gators. Tony, loved having you here today. Thank you for joining us on the inaugural College Football Better Center Live. Someday I'll figure out how to wrap this shit up so but uh thanks for joining us tony we're gonna uh we're gonna get you again here maybe be here again tomorrow talk about all them big favorites that are gonna come in today and talk a little bit more college football with you sounds great lou y'all guys have a great day good luck with all your action man cash some tickets out there All right. Same to you, Tony. We'll talk to you again real soon. All right, sports fans. That is Tony Gulledge. You'll be able to follow him as the great white capper on Better Center. If you haven't been out there yet, bettercenter.com. That's where we got about 55 handicappers out right there, out there. Posting out their plays every day, laying it all on the line, not afraid to come here, talk to you about what they're doing before the games go off, give you a little idea of their insights before you make a commitment to any of the Better Center handicappers. So we're going to be joined here again right now with uh, Anthony Nassour, also another Better Center handicapper. You'll find him at Reno Sharp VIP. Now, a little bit about Anthony. He hustles the streets up in uh, Reno. So he's with the syndicate. They have sharp action, and they're coming in. They they did have a one play that was canceled today with LSU and BYU. So unfortunately, he won't be able to give us uh, too much insight onto that one. But uh, does have another sharp play that's coming in from the streets, and uh, he'll go over some moves with us and uh, give us a little idea how he can help you out uh, on your sports betting Saturdays. So uh, uh, whenever we can get Tony here, we'll have him pop up here right on the screen. Meanwhile, let me give you some scoring updates. If uh, you know, you're watching us while you're watching games and really don't have all the scores in front of you, Bowling Green ahead of Michigan State early, 3 to nothing, uh, 429 left in the first quarter. Michigan State was a 20-point favorite, bet down to 17. The steam looks good right here. Uh, Iowa and Wyoming still scoreless, four minutes left in the first. And the under got steam there, 53 and a half, down to 51. And once again, the steam looks good. And, uh, oh, I tried to put him on speaker. That's right, Anthony, uh, call me back again here, buddy. We just missed you on the phone call. So uh, we'll get Anthony here in a second. I think we're having some technical difficulties to get him on the screen, but uh, we will get him here on a uh, live call here uh, very shortly. So um, uh, some other uh, updates here on uh, the screen today. You know, one game that we did fail to talk about with Tony, we got a little carried away there, was the Alabama LSU, uh, Alabama, FSU matchup here today. Number one versus number three. Pretty much uh, hyped as the biggest opening matchup in the history of college football. Yes, I know. And you guys worry about us touts with the sensationalism and the fake news. Get the fuck out of here. All right, uh, 7-0, Penn State finally gets on the board as a big 30-point favorite. They have been the hottest covering team 
in college football. Let's see if that continues for them here today. And let's see if we have them on the line. Anthony Nassour, are you with us? Yes, I am. How you doing today, buddy? I'm fine. Just watch Ball State do their thing in the first quarter here. We're on them early. There you go. Seven to six. Nice little dog. Got a little barking going right now. Arr. Oh, man, love it. All right. So how's everything out? Uh, in, well, you're actually in Cali today, not on the streets, right? Yes, I'm in Cali today. There was a big little party going on out here. I had to come and make it to. I could not miss it. So I'm here. And I actually feel good this morning, even after a night of having a couple of good old-fashioned Alpha Centauri. There you go. All right. So uh, what's uh, looking good today? What do you got going on with the syndicate? Well, first off, why don't you just um, give us a little uh, uh, background on your history? Well, I started betting around 1992. Uh, I used to do some running out in Reno for a popular guy named Kelso Sturgeon. Okay. And I did a little bit for some other little guys in the ground out there. And I started learning about the number buying and as far as... Uh, find out what numbers win and what, what frequency. And another thing I learned about was smart money versus sharp money versus the wise guy money, things like that nature. So I've been doing it for a long time. Awesome. All right, been successful, and this is pretty much uh, what you do for a living. You're out there hustling, finding the best numbers, and finding the best plays. Yeah, all day long. There you go. And you're working with a nice uh, little syndicate. So. Yes. All right, and so it's uh, basically, for those that are, are a little unfamiliar with the syndicate, it's just a group of guys getting together, pulling their money together, pulling their minds together, feeling uh, an edge, and when they do, they bet that edge, and uh, they usually bet it until the number cha changes, uh, till the edge is gone for them. So what's, uh, what's the flavor of the day out there right now? You want to go through the steam, or you want to go through your plays? Well, we, uh, we, like the, we like the points on that one. Well, I, I understand that, but uh, the game has been postponed. Oh, no. Yes, yes, that game has been canceled, obviously due to uh, the uh, weather, Hurricane Harvey, and uh, that one has been canceled as well as, um, uh, there's a second game canceled down there in that area. So uh, BYU, LSU, Houston, and Texas San Antonio has also been canceled. So unfortunately, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that one today. <laughs> we'll not be able to take advantage of that one. Somebody out there collect our money and get it back for us. Well, uh, they'll pay you back. One that we do like. We do like Northwestern. Northwestern, playing your uh, boys up there at uh, UNR, the old Wolfpack. <laughs> right, we're fading the hometown team. Going against your homies. All right, what's going on with that game? Why are they steaming it? Northwestern opens up a 23-point favorite. You had the early steam went uh, your way. Obviously, uh, you guys did something with it. Uh, went from 23 to 24. I'm even seeing a 25 at the uh, uh, at the win right now. But they'll jack up the favorites. So, and uh, so uh, they're definitely getting the steam. And um, UNR, uh, the total on the game uh, has got huge steam. 52 and a half it opened up, up to 60 right now. So obviously they're not expecting the defense to sh defenses to be uh, uh, on top on their top game today. Let's put it that way. So yeah, I don't think they'll be able to handle Northwestern up front. Their line is pretty good. All right. So, uh, and uh, anything else you're seeing out there? Any other kind of moves? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we've got some other moves that we're keeping an eye on. Uh, we like 
Appalachian in the points. Uh, I think they're playing Georgia. Yes, they are. And we do like the points on that one. There's a, another one later on also with Arkansas State. We like that 14. Okay. Now, Appalachian State, they get a lot of respect from the batters, uh, and it probably dates back to that big upset when they were 30-point underdogs. I think it was against Michigan, and they wind up winning outright. And then every time they've come in and played a big team, they, they've been respectable. But now they're on the board every week, and uh, I think they may be um, – a little bit uh, overvalued. I think a lot of people are kind of jumping on them. I'm not too big on that play here today. Georgia did so bad last year, I don't want to have anything to do with them until I see what they uh, put together. But uh, certainly Appalachian State has been a uh, fan favorite, or a better favorite, uh, for the last 10 years, uh, grabbing a lot of points. And uh, it's, a, it's a program that's definitely up and coming and making a name for themselves. Oh, yeah. So, and um, all right, so, uh, so you definitely see uh, Northwestern minus the 24 is, uh, is something that uh, you guys are on and you're hitting here strong. We're in there. We may get stronger on it. We, uh, we put in position move on it. We may end up going back and buying some more. We're looking for just a little taste of movement. We're looking for maybe a 24 and a half, maybe a 25 and we close this. And then we'll probably end up buying some more. All right. Okay. And um, why don't you let everybody know how they can get a hold of you, Anthony, how they can get the details and get the games before they move. Well, I usually like to send them out via text. Uh, what I have is a pretty extensive mailing list, and then I just use that email and have all the members go ahead and log in and, and synchronize it with their phone. And then they get it basically seconds after we make our moves. Nice. So you're on top of things. Guys are getting the plays in real time. Oh, yeah, we get them like, real fast. They, they get them, like, basically minutes after we make our play. Great. So if you want to find out more about Anthony Nassour, Reno Sharp VIP, remember, he's up in Reno, and they're moving – you know, they're moving serious action. They're making the lines move up in Reno. And I know you say, oh, they're making lines move in Reno. But guess what? Making lines move is making lines move. And at the end of the day, when you're controlling a little bit of the market, you got something. So if you want to get a little piece of Anthony's action, look for him on LVSPN.com or bettercenter.com where uh, Anthony's putting his plays in there every day and uh, you get them uh, in advance if you just go out to his website which I believe is renosharpvip.com is that right? Uh, localrenosharpreport.com local local but you'll also find him on lvspn.com and bettercenter.com, and so uh, follow him. He's on uh, he's on the pulse of the business, and if you want to be on the pulse too, follow Anthony, follow LVSPN. All right, Anthony, anything you want to part us with? Any final uh, shots that we can hear around the world here? Yes. My, my thing for everybody out there is always try to make sure you bet plus EV moves. Find a move where... The cash outweighs, the cash percentage outweighs the percentage of bets made. Simple as that. And that. It, it, it's great advice. And in my opinion, that's what I was showing everybody there today when I was showing the, uh, uh, when I was showing you the conference mismatches on the added and extra board games. So if you look at the bottom of the schedule, you'll see all those conference mismatches. You'll see all the big favorites, 25, 30. You see those big favorites? Jump on them. That is plus EV, positive EV. If you bet it every time, all season long, you're going to be ahead. You got the big fish eating the small fish. But you got to know what the real big fish are. And they're down there 
on the extra boards and the added boards. So look for it there, guys. Okay, this is Louis Diamond uh, for Anthony Sword. Thank you very much. Appreciate you joining us. Looking forward to have you here again uh, often so we can uh, get those updates and the line moves and uh, where the steam's going. So uh, stay tuned to LVSPN. We'll be coming to you. We're going to try to get to you an hour before the first game every day, get you the steam reports and get you some picks. This is Louie Diamond. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again here real soon. All right, Anthony.